Hi, I'm John Neighbor. I swam in the Olympic Games in 1976, and I've been a part of the Ready, Set, Gold program since the day it began. I love Ready, Set, Gold because it allows us to talk about Olympism or the Olympic ideals, which we love to share. Olympians love to share those philosophies with the rest of the world. So today I want to talk to you about something called routine. Uh, another word for that might be habit. I remember that somebody told me that you burn energy thinking. It, it takes a, an effort to give thought to things and therefore the human body tends to learn habits so that it doesn't have to think as often. The letters of the alphabet are in that order not because A is better than B but because by putting them in the order we don't have to think about the next one. It just sort of comes naturally. If I ask you to recite the alphabet backwards, it's a lot tougher to do. And so that's one of the things that sport teaches us, that if you build a routine, build a habit into your life, you don't have to spend so much time thinking, and you can focus your energies on doing things that are important. So every workout I ever did began with a warm-up, a loosen-up warm-up, then we had a, uh, it's called a, a building set, where you start slow and then get faster. So you get your body ready to go. And then we had the main set, which is really the grunt, hard work, make you sweat, make it all hard. And afterwards, we would do a little pulling set, where we'd tie an inner tube around our ankles and just use upper body. And then we'd use a kickboard and just use the feet. And then when that was done, we always had to end with a little bit of sprinting when we were most tired. And then, of course, is the loosen down. You got to calm down before you get out of the water. The same routine every day. And here's where it paid off. My personal coach, my personal coach, my college coach, was not my Olympic coach. And if I had to think about what am I going to do, my coach wasn't there to help me. But because I had built in a routine, I could go to the Olympics in a strange environment and I knew exactly what to do every day. Here, here's another example. If I were to tell you, you can sound like a galloping horse if you clap your hands, slap your thigh, slap your thigh. If you have to think about it, it doesn't sound like a horse at all. But if you do it enough, pretty soon it'll be a habit. I'm not thinking about what I'm doing. It's just happening because I made it into a routine that was easy to repeat. And so when you get up in the morning, you don't have to say, do I want to go to work or do I want to go to school or do I want to go swimming? Make the decision once and then the routine will carry you the rest of the way. My name is John Moffat. I'm a two-time Olympic swimmer and I'm also a Ready, Set, Gold athlete and I have been for several years now. Routines are something that's vitally important to being an athlete, but it's vitally important to working hard as well. So whether or not you want to work hard in school or whether or not you want to work hard in sports or dance or art or what have you, a routine is key because that's the way you learn is that cumulative effect of doing it over and over and over again. However, one thing that I've learned, and this applies also to nutrition, is that you want to balance things out. I could, was never one of those athletes that could just work and work and work and work and work and not have fun, not go out with friends, not go to a movie. Um, and some people, some people are better at working really hard and not doing anything, but I personally was always somebody who I worked really, really, really hard, but I also forced myself to have fun. I didn't force myself to have fun, I had to have fun, because otherwise I'd go nuts. And so it's like that with nutrition as well. You always wanna strive for eating things that are good for you in a balanced diet that's non-processed. You want to avoid soda pop, for example. But if you're going to have soda pop, there's nothing wrong with having it once a week, but don't do it every day. Same thing with stuff like pizza. Pizza is delicious. Everybody loves pizza, but maybe you just have it on a Friday afternoon or Friday evening. So do it in moderation. With regard to athletics, if you do too much of your training, you get injured you get overtrained. So everything is in moderation with that regiment that you've, you've, you've uh, set up. When, when, when I was young and before I started swimming competitively, I really didn't have that much of a routine. And the one thing that swimming taught me and all sports teach you is that you have to be, you have to have a routine. You have to do things day in and day out. 
You don't have to do always do a lot of something, but you need to do it again and again and again. That's how you get good at something. And it doesn't matter how talented you are as an athlete. It doesn't matter how smart you are in the classroom or how talented you are in dance or in, in music or whatever you choose that you want to dedicate yourself to. That hard work is the added ingredient that is vital. It's absolutely vital for, to having success, no matter what your talent level is. And so that's something that I learned at a very young age, that yes, I had some innate talent, but I also knew that I had to work really, really hard. And that is, that is transcendent for all life. And that's something that I was lucky that sports gave it to me at a young age. I started swimming when I was 11. And so sports gave me that routine, gave me that structure that then I could then apply it to other aspects of my life, such as schoolwork and things like that. So, uh, and, and it also applies to nutrition. Don't eat too much junk food at once. I mean, just don't do it. You can interspace a little bit, but don't, don't go overboard. And I believe anything that you've decided that you wanna do, let's say you want to start eating more food that is non-processed. Well, you don't have to do it every moment of every day, but start by just challenging yourself. Maybe you say, this week I'm going to try to eat non-processed food all week long. And then on Friday, I can have that pizza. Something like that. And just start with that. Because we all need breaks, but we all want to be the best that we can be. And that requires hard work and focus on your routine. I have a challenge for you this week. What I would like you to do is see how long you can go, how many days in a row you can go with eating non-processed food. Eat the whole wheat bread. Eat the, the good vegetables in the rainbow salad or the eggs in the, in the rainbow eggs that John made. Try to do that for as long as you can without reaching for the potato chips, without reaching, without reaching for the processed cookies or the soda pop. I'm going to be doing it. I will do it all this week, and I challenge you to do the same. Ready Set Gold 2021 Spring Series is powered by the Foundation for Global Sports Development and Sidewinder Films. Hello and welcome everybody. I'm John Neighbor, Olympic swimmer from the 1976 Games and we're here in the John Moffat breakfast area and here is John Moffat, also an Olympic swimmer. 1984 was his Olympic Games and he also made the 1980 team that was sadly denied the right to go to those Olympics because we call it the Boycott Games. Anyway, today we're here for Ready, Set, Gold to talk to you about healthy eating and also how to keep a good routine in your life. And John, thank you for opening your kitchen for us today. Well, John, I'm, it's a pleasure to have you here and I'm very excited to be here for the second of our series of Ready, Set, Gold cooking show. And, um, and yeah, as John would said, first of all, I think we should introduce who John is. John is a four-time Olympic gold medalist from the 76 Olympics. He did a fine job introducing me, but we have to make sure that John gets his props as well. Um, and and as, as far as his food goes, it's super important. It's something that as an athlete, when I was growing up, the nutrition is key. You have to be able to fuel your body in order to function properly. So we'll talk a little bit more about that, but right now we're just excited to give you a couple of really, really easy, easy recipes that you can use then you could cook yourself or prepare yourself after school or before you go to school. So let's think of today as sharing with you three different meals, a breakfast, a lunch, and an after school snack. We'll let mom worry about dinner. What we have in front of us are delightful produce provided by Melissa's Produce. They're healthy and delicious. And if you think about it, getting up early and getting in the car and going down and getting a, a, a fast food breakfast takes about 30 minutes once you get in line and get the food, you gotta pay for it. This whole thing can be prepared in about 30 minutes. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna start by turning on the heat underneath this grill. Is that gonna go? Yep, that's on. And we're gonna uh, saute some vegetables, put them into a pot with eggs. We're gonna scramble the eggs, and then they're gonna come out nice and fluffy and delicious. When you start the heat under the, uh, under the uh, skillet, we're gonna put a little bit of butter in there, a little pad of butter. 
will be ideal because it'll melt and it'll help the uh, vegetables saute and it'll help lubricate the pan so that the eggs don't stick. So while that is taking place, let me tell you what we're going to put inside our scramble today. We've got all sorts of choices here. We've got spinach, avocado, tomato, and we have little tiny bell peppers. These are the sweet ones. They're not spicy and hot, but they do have seeds inside. So we're going to cut them into tiny little pieces before we put them into the hot butter. Okay, so we take this nice sweet bell pepper, a very sharp knife. Be very, very careful, but you cut off the, the top here and then I just like to cut down the middle. And if you see inside, they come with little tiny seeds and they're easily removed. So you don't have to worry about the seeds. They come off very, very easily. And then when you have the peppers all lined up, they're easy to cut without getting anywhere near your fingers. These go into our tray of peppers. Now, I'm gonna take a handful of these and put them into the hot butter. That's going to let them sit and simmer while we continue preparing the other items. Okay, now the base of any breakfast is going to be eggs. You can see I've already cracked one in here. It's pretty easy to crack an egg. People like to crack it on sharp edges. I actually find it just as easy to bang it on a flat surface. And that puts a hole in the outside of the egg and it makes it really easy to drop those contents into the pot here. And of course, we're going to stir these up and make ourselves a nice little scrambled eggs. But if you want them to be nice and fluffy, all you need to do is add just a splash of, of uh, cream, half and half, or even milk will do. Just a little touch of that. And that makes the eggs rise when they, got, when they get hot. Okay, so while this is going on here, it's easy to stir the, uh, the eggs. Those are gonna go on top of these nicely nicely warmed peppers. We're also going to put in tomatoes. Now these are beautiful. These are a little thicker tomatoes. They're not full of liquid as much and they make for much better chopping and slicing. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you just a few of them. How we do this. Okay, so we're just going to slice them this way and then slice them this way. A nice sharp knife helps. And that's going to go on top of the eggs once they get a little bit um, uh, cooked. So we'll also be preparing an avocado. Now avocados are so interesting because they have this really huge nut on the inside. Now you notice how I twisted them apart and it allows me to bring out the nut. And if you hit the nut with a knife, it allows the nut to come out so smooth and easy. Okay, so we're gonna chop up or, or slice up the avocado so it comes out in nice, beautiful chunks. And you can turn the skin inside out. Whoops, and there it comes. So we've got the avocado chunks, we've got the tomato chunks, and now we're gonna do spinach. Now here's the fun one. Spinach is not like what Popeye eats out of a can. Fresh spinach comes in these beautiful, rubbery, sounding leaves and if you roll them together like you're making a cigar you can julienne the spinach so much faster so much easier into nice little manageable pieces so we're going to put all of these ingredients together on a plate okay so while the eggs are while the uh, peppers have been uh, heating we're going to go ahead and pour our egg mixture onto it now the pan is hot already, so the eggs are going to cook. Now some people make an omelet by letting the eggs cook and flip them. We're going to scramble them and we're also going to put in our other ingredients. Okay, so now we have everything in one big pile. We cooked the peppers because they're awfully crunchy and when you cook the peppers it softens them a little bit whereas the tomatoes are not so crunchy the spinach is not so crunchy look at the color of that plate doesn't that look healthy it's got the yellow of the eggs the tomato red and the green spinach with the avocado it's just a gorgeous look and we just let it cook you don't have to you don't have to burn it you just have to let it sit and I think you'll find it's going to be an absolutely delicious meal if you make sure that you turn everything over so that there's no uncooked egg in the pot. 
Doesn't that look great? Doesn't that look wonderful? Now it's only been on the fire for maybe three, four minutes, which will make it perfect when we absolutely have to prepare it. We're gonna dish it right out here. These beautiful ingredients by Melissa's Produce make this an absolutely spectacular plate. Doesn't that look like something you'd want to sink your teeth into? And that's a way to fill your stomach before the start of the day. Here's a fun fact. The word breakfast comes from the history word to break the fast. When people fasted for religious reasons, the first meal they would have at the end of the fast would be the meal that started the following day. That would break the fast. So if you're going to break a fast, this is a pretty good way to do it. So John did a great job with his rainbow eggs for breakfast. And today we're moving on to a midday meal. And the theme of today is rainbow. And it goes with the theme of you want all kinds of different ingredients with all kinds of different properties to make a balanced diet over the course of an entire day. So what we're going to be making is the rainbow salad. And we're going to be using some of the ingredients that John used in his eggs for our salad. And the first and primary base ingredient that we're going to use, just as John did in a salad, is we're going to be using whole spinach leaves. You don't need to cut them up for a salad. It's fine just to, just to be able to have a, a little bit bigger leaves. And the leaves of, uh, of spinach are the perfect size. They're the perfect bite size. And just one cup of spinach is packed with an amazing amount of ingredients. It's not just, as John said, Popeye and eating spinach out of the can. It's vital that it's fresh, like this, all of this produce that came from Melissa's produce. Um, it's, it's a great source of vitamin A, vitamin C, and folate. The word comes from the word foliage. Um, and, and of course, vitamin K, and these are, these are vital ingredients for just healthy development and healthy growing, and will get you fueled throughout your busy rest of your day. All right, so, so just take a, depending upon the portion size, if you're making it just for you, a handful will do just fine. If you're making it for more, put in another handful for each serving. Our second ingredient that we're going to be putting in is pomegranate seeds. Pomegranate seeds obviously add a beautiful red color to the, to the existing green of the, of the leaves, but they're, uh, they add a sweetness, a tartness and a sweetness, so it's a balanced taste. So you, don't, you have all kinds of different tastes and that's what makes it delicious. So I'm gonna add a, a few pomegranate seeds and that'll add the sweet and tart. The next ingredient that we're going to be putting in are chickpeas. Chickpeas are a great source of protein. And if you don't have time to cook a chicken or, 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 or get your source of protein from another source, chickpeas are a great source of that and they're delicious and they will add kind of a meaty uh, fullness of flavor to the salad while you're getting that necessary protein to really help uh, fuel muscle and build your, build your muscles and build your fitness throughout the day. And stamina as well. So again, just a handful of chickpeas if you're making it for yourself, more if, you, if, you want, uh, if you're making it for more people. And then we've got blueberries, so the blueberries are a great source of antioxidants. They help your immune system and just remain really healthy so that your immune system works well. And they're also obviously a fruit, and so they're a great source of vitamin C to help balance out your diet. And then we have another greens here, and these are just, these are just cucumbers. And again, cucumbers will add another dimension of flavor, but also a dimension of crunch. So I just like to make them little, little quarter-sized rounds and add a few of those. And then we have the rainbow peppers that John used from his scrambled eggs. And just add some of those, and they will add just a little bit of spiciness, a sweet spiciness to your salad. And then we have some avocado from John's eggs. And then we have some leftover tomato that's already been cut by John. So that all goes in together. <clears throat> and then I like to add a little bit of dressing to the top. So I already have a little bit of olive oil in there. 
and you add just a, tash, ta uh, just a dash of vinegar. I'm using balsamic vinegar. And just stir it up a little bit, and you, a little goes a long way. And just sprinkle that over the salad, and then toss, and then it's ready to eat. It's that simple. Okay, and now I have a snack for you after school. It's a very simple snack. It's basically peanut butter, bread, and bananas. It's delicious and simple, and you can make this whole thing in less than five minutes. Now, I'm just lucky enough that we happened to bake bread a few days ago, so we actually have home-baked bread. And to talk a little bit about the importance of having ingredients in your diet that are not processed, you always want to, if you can, go to the source. Eat the real spinach, not from a can peppers that you cut and slice yourself. All of these ingredients that we've used today are ingredients that are as they came off of the plant or tree or wherever they came from. And it's super important that you try to stay away from things like cookies or processed baked snacks that come in a bag. Um, and, and always try to eat stuff that is as natural as possible because that's ultimately best for your health, for your immunity, and your, just your overall all fitness and, uh, and your overall diet. Okay, here's a, here's a challenge for you. Try to imagine that you're one of your historic heroes. I used to love Abraham Lincoln. You might be fond of Harriet Tubman. Whoever you think back in history, what would they be eating? They wouldn't have a choice of processed foods on the shelf. Right. They would have to eat from the farm, from the ranch, and that's what we're doing today. And this little snack has three different food groups all in one. You've got protein in the peanut butter. You've got wheats and grains in the bread. And you've got fruits or vegetables here in the banana. All of those in a single snack that you can fix in less than three minutes. And we don't need to tell anybody about how to put peanut butter on toast, but I've already toasted these slices. And just put in your thickness of peanut butter. Some people like really thin layers of peanut butter. Other people like thicker. So John, I will give you lots and lots of peanut butter. Give me butter. lots. I love peanut butter. <laughs> Very, very good. Okay, here's an interesting way to prepare your banana. I put a little notch in the side so that when I tear it open, it just opens up just that easily. I'm not gonna peel the entire banana. I'm gonna leave some of it unpeeled because when I set it here, it's so easy for me to go ahead and do the, the coin. I call them banana coins. They're little tiny discs. And you just make them just that fast. And look at that, onto the here you go, John, help yourself to some of those. It just fit right on the toast. They're gonna to be delicious and fun to eat. And I don't know if anyone's ever told you this or not, but bananas come in thirds. The banana meat itself. Anyway, let's give it a taste. Here's to your health. Good eating means a good life. John, thank you. Thank you, John. Mm. Delicious. Mm. Mm. A very satisfying snack and delicious. <laughs> you have the, sorry. You've got peanut butter on the mouth. <laughs> yes, you have the hearty stickiness of the peanut butter and the rich flavor of the peanut butter combined with this very subtle sweetness of the banana and then the crispness of the bread. It's an amazing combination. And don't just limit yourself to peanut butter. Try your, try your hand at some other nut butters as well because they have di subtly different properties that are also very good for you. We also want to do special thanks to the Foundation for Global Sports Development for helping us with this, uh, with this program to share it with you. And, and Sidewinder Films as well, because they have really been completely 100% dedicated to Ready, Set, Gold and behind us 100% of the way. And for that, I thank you. So, good eating. Happy life, enjoy yourself. Cheers, everyone. Ready, Set, Gold 2021 Spring Series is powered by the Foundation for Global Sports Development and Sidewinder Films.